South Africa is grappling with a surge in gun violence. The problem was put in the spotlight after three separate shootings in one weekend left 22 people dead. In all three incidents, suspects opened fire on people in bars before speeding off in vehicles. But even before these shootings, gun crimes in South Africa were increasing at an alarming rate. An average of 23 people are shot and killed in South Africa every day. That's according to the country's annual crime statistics. I'll be talking to an expert about how to address the problem after this report. Packed in these bags are nearly 25,000 firearms confiscated or handed in to police in South Africa. On this day, these guns are all going to be destroyed. South Africa has one of the highest violent crime rates in the world. Authorities say illegal weapons in the hands of criminals are contributing to the problem. In less privileged communities, like this one where one of the recent tavern shootings took place, people are terrorized. We don't feel safe because we don't know whether the people responsible for the shooting are still in our township or not. We're not safe. We can't walk in the street or even go to the shops without feeling nervous. We are afraid because these people could still be here with us. I would like our government to go door to door and collect all the illegal firearms and arrest those found with illegal firearms. They should work day and night and visit all the shacks and houses here because we often get mugged. Visiting the communities affected by the recent shooting attacks, the country's police minister promised more police presence. We're going to try and increase police visibility in the streets of this place. We want to take them back. We want to saturate the streets here. It should be us police ruling the streets here and not the criminals. But activists say gun crime in South Africa is part of much wider problems in the country, including corruption in the police service. Earlier, I spoke to Zianda Stierman, a police and security analyst based in Cape Town. I asked her what was driving South Africa's growing gun violence. So one of the uh, major drivers of this ep epidemic is the fact that there are gangs that have grown in size over the past two years in South Africa. So during the COVID-19 pandemic, many gangs whose operations were disrupted by our lockdowns and our curfews really changed their tactic into operating in uh, extortion rings and in organized crime within very many communities. Those same gangs are now fighting over turf in those extortion rings and extorting particularly small business owners. The other factor is that there's been, uh, for, for quite a while, a circulation of illegal guns in the country. It's very difficult in South Africa to get a legal gun. And so you're starting to see more and more uh, gangs move into the territory of buying and selling illegal weapons. So, for instance, in the recent attack, uh, the recent gun violence attack, an AK-47 was used, right? How does someone in South Africa get hold of such a weapon? So we have very, very strict gun laws, um, and that definitely means that the average person goes nowhere near a rifle or a high-caliber firearm. I would uh, think that in this case, particularly given a lot of history of illegal guns flowing into the uh, both from outside of our border, also within the borders, these were uh, very likely to be stolen weapons. They may have been stolen from the military, may have been stolen from the police, uh, or quite likely as well, stolen from evidence rooms across the country. Solution-oriented now, what can be done to help stop the flow of these illegal weapons? I think that there's really something to be said around uh, the issue of corruption within the police service uh, or within the military. And that's, that really um, drives, in some parts, uh, the availability of illegal guns. We really need to see the police themselves clamp down uh, on how strict they are about uh, giving out guns or assigning service pistols to police officers, because those can be stolen. And once they are, it's very, very difficult to find them, uh, to confiscate them or to destroy them. 
Uh, that said, that's also a solution. Uh, that once a, a gun has been uh, placed into police custody, particularly for evidence, once that case is over, that firearm should be destroyed. Otherwise, it's kept somewhere. Uh, and then, you know, temptingly, a gang might decide that they uh, bust into an evidence locker room or into a particular um, police storage place and steal those guns. Mm. There's, um, I think, a, a lot of uh, or many of these illegal guns that are going through uh, the system and circulating in the country, particularly around that. But I, but I really want to emphasize that the issue here isn't legal firearm ownership. Mm. It really is the fact that we have quite a few leakages, uh, mm. particularly from our security service, in terms of these guns circulating. Zianda, what more can be done to stem gun violence? So much of, of uh, like I said earlier, much of our issue around uh, gun violence is also tied to gang violence. And what we know about gangs is that they operate in highly dysfunctional communities. So if we had communities that were healthier, where there were more uh, economic opportunities available, and really where people, uh, particularly young people, weren't tempted into joining gangs, I think we could, uh, over a long period of time, be able to lower the temptation into joining gangs or, the, or for that to be an attractive option uh, for young people to turn to. It is a really hard task, and like I said, would take many years, but we have to start somewhere, and I think that's a big, big component of okay. how we start to stem the tide of gun violence. As the saying goes, little drops of water make a mighty ocean. Zeanda Stierman, Policing and Security Analyst in Cape Town, South Africa, thank you.